Let's just, well, just actually, get no, going. Go. Okay. This is, I, I love, I love my tripod. I just, oh, I'm glad I'm a, that you're. I adore it. it I was, no, there are no books or jerry rigging to be done of any kind. So you kind. ordered yourself a little, uh, which, and again, I'd like to show you mine, but my camera was sitting, but so we've got new equipment. Well, you showed me too. a picture of it. Yep. So I'll take a picture and I'll show it to you. I'll send all it right. to you. All right. So we're and all I set. And I got a couple of, we're all set. A little late today, but uh, because of, of uh, professional requirements and personal things, but uh, you are well, are you? I am doing fine. And okay. the camera's working fairly well. I yes. I think it is. We've had and no microphone problems this week so far very happy i'm coming in loud and clear you are there's no breakup you are so indeed too I may have, and of with course, my new earbuds you're coming in loud and clear to me famous last words please go ahead because this All is a, right an odds and sods friday i've got a rant and other things ready for you i'll okay. try to keep you myself under control my oh really are you that pissed off no 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 i just uh it's been a long day. Here we are. Okay. Of course, that, that, this has been your go-to page since Netscape was available, I think, right? <laughs> since, uh, <laughs> but you told me this isn't available to you, so this I, is a public service I'm I performing think right Jeff now. Jeff Bezos was still in, in, in short <laughs> pants when you started <laughs> with this damn web That's right. The numbers and letters used to be written in Gotham. There are way more by, colorful by and <laughs> exciting weather pages than the Environment Canada. It's, it, it is so environment and it's so Canada, isn't it, this but, page? Uh, it's it's I can, like... I can uh, give you radar and the satellite. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know? Okay. So off we go. Let's go oh, to my. explore the world. <laughs> okay. How much of this can I play? Uh, that's, uh, I think we're already in, I think, uh, what's his name? Um, it's already- Williams is, John Williams just got a million bucks, didn't he's he? He's calling his lawyers right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is inner space. I got that taco meat out of the fridge finally. Okay. I know it looks like a sandwich, but the real picture is just too revolting to show you. So oh, I- Oh, I, I see. That. Yeah. Okay. Huh. <laughs> I'm a cinematographer. Yes, I, and I like the way you fade it in and then fade it back <laughs> out again for the next slide. That's very good. Yeah. <laughs> Problem is, I'm going to be doing that a lot now because I find out that it's fun. Uh, uh, Tuesday, July 20th, less than a month away, Perseverance will be launched from Cape Canaveral to Mars, and it will have a tiny little passenger. And the oh. passenger is a helicopter. Oh. It's a very small helicopter. The helicopter is known as Ingenuity. Perseverance will strap it to its uh, its underside, its little belly. Yeah. So in effect, giving it birth. Uh, then when they get to uh, Mars in February of 2021, uh, Perseverance will unload this little guy. They'll find it's, a flat spot. It says it says Amazon Prime on the side. That's very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> yeah. Sweet capital cigarettes. <laughs> So we're into, we're into the space part. It's getting a little scary. Okay. So this guy, they're going to they're gonna run tests for another two months. So that would make it uh, April yeah. uh, when the uh, little guy is going to get its rotors going and into space. The problem, as you know, because you've been looking into this uh, very... This, uh, that there's no air. So somebody exactly. got something wrong. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the air uh, mass of, of the Earth is about... Uh, one hundredth that of uh, the Earth. So this little guy taking off would have to uh, be taking off at 100,000 feet comparable to Earth. Modern jets oh. don't fly that high. Okay. So this was going to be a problem with the rotors and stability. And look at how small this thing is. Yes. The guy mm -hmm. is, uh, each blade is four feet across. Uh, oh, okay. Ingenuity weighs four pounds and is one and a half feet high. Mm -hmm. So in, in order to overcome the lack of air and gravity, they, they, they made the, um, the, blades. the rotors very, very thin and light, but incredibly stiff. Because if you start going around 2000 RPM, you could imagine there could be a spill. A you child could, uh, could take you a could spill. You could put an eye out with that. You could. It would just yes. go all over the place, much the way I try to get into a, a Varka lounger chair. So this guy's going to have five flights. Uh, it doesn't sound like much, uh, but the biggest one will be about 15 feet up 
and travel around 500 feet. Uh, Perseverance will back off 100 yards and they'll, they'll never meet again, which is really kind of oh, sad. that's kind of sad. Yeah, but, but Perseverance will have other jobs to do. And what they're excited about, better than the rover, is the overhead look they will have rather than just the rover's camera. This guy will be fitted with two cameras. One will act really as a, a rudder to make sure it knows where it is. It can gauge itself. And the other one will be a color uh, f- uh, camera which will take pictures of the Martian service. Wow. surface. Imagine, so, imagine how nerve wracking it must be waiting for this to be deployed. And then some guy says, did you put the batteries in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I forgot to turn off the stove. Jesus. So it's, it's gonna be there. And, yeah, well, I'm waiting for it to get there, land properly, perseverance uh, and uh, ingenuity will hug for a while but then they have to leave each other, unfortunately. And, they, you know, 500 feet on Mars seems like bugger all when you give this, you know, the size of the galaxy, let alone the universe. But uh, they will be able to see more of the Martian planet, which will give them a better idea of the terrain. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So this is a first. And they've got another one planned for another one. And uh, there's, there's pretty much the Martian. There's another buggy there. Artist's rendition. One they're shooting, the other one they are shooting is to the uh, uh, moon of uh, Saturn known as Titan, which has a much bigger, uh, thicker atmosphere, more like ours. They actually think there might be a possibility of some sort of life on Titan, and uh, Titan will make it easier for ingenuity-like things to fly around uh, because of the thicker atmosphere. Wow. So this one's going in, I, I think, a couple of years. Now, there we go. Oh, and I just yep. heard this week, you may have heard that, uh, they, that NASA renamed a research center in honor of a woman, an African-American woman. Um, oh, are they the subjects of that movie, that wonderful movie? With I, Kevin don't, I don't know. I just saw that go by, but it just flashed in my little brain there. Please well, continue. Well, good. Yep. Good. That, yep. that is about time. Anyway, this is the moon Titan going around Saturn, and apparently it's fading away. Uh, I'm not sure what that means about the pull of Saturn, but uh, Titan, or, or uh, Saturn rather, but it means that uh, somehow this guy's, I don't know if it's breaking away, but it's, it, it's, uh, its orbit is starting to get uh, wider. Uh, hmm. and, and astronomers are actually uh, very thrilled. I did not know you that, that you were this interested in space matters. But I uh, am. I have this, no idea how to This particular a illustration brings me back to what I thought you were interested in. But okay, I can understand. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is a black hole. Mm-hmm. And it is uh, not, actually, it's not heavy enough to be a black hole, but it is not, it's heavier than a neutron star, which of course is a dying star. It was eaten by a a massive black hole, which was the mass of more than 23 of our suns. That's, that's bigger than you and me together. That's, That's pretty, that's pretty big. And once it ate it, no belching because nothing gets away from a black hole, right? Mm. It mass, That's it. Uh, its mass jumped up to 25. Wow. So I, I don't think either of us could lift it even together. Uh, it's about 700. <laughs> you should, should have, you should have, there you go. We're, we're missing the fade in there. Thank you. Yeah. 780 million light years away. That's Pacific time. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a long way. Uh, the collision was first detected last year and confirmed this year. It was loud, astronomically uh, speaking. It uh, took all of 10 seconds, so it was faster than, you know, teenage sex. It took about 10 seconds for it but, to but eat But it fade up here, too. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, two black holes collided four billion light years, uh, four billion years, sorry, four billion years away. And we're swirling around each other. So we're see seeing something that happened things. a long time ago. Yes, it took four billion years right. to get here. So we're talking mid-universe. Uh, There's okay. the other so black they, hole. So they've gone to bed and the, the lights are out at this point. They, they've, yeah, they're they've, just, they're just sending uh, old okay. pictures of they're Danny gone. Kay yeah. and things right. like that. They're, the porch, they're gone. The it's porch just, light is out. Yes. Yeah, it actually looks like the screen, doesn't it? Anyway, yeah. these guys headed together, but then something really unusual happened. Uh, they hit this big guy and they all, all got together. But something that ast- astronomers have heretofore never, never experienced is the shock wave of gas and heat that spat out 
they were able to see it because light doesn't escape from black holes, right? But this was so massive, they actually detected it visually. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yep. I've got should, some pictures of the summer trip. But, you should have uh, been an astronomer. Oh, God. I you would have, just, I'm, you would I'm have fascinated by this yes, stuff. Yes, you are, I aren't really you? Am. I have, yes, I, yes. I, I, I couldn't open the door to the... Fascinated uh, by your place in the universe. That's right. Here is a uh, giant, uh, a couple of giant worlds, actually, two of them. They are orbiting, uh, and this is unusual, too. This is a red dwarf, which, of course, is a dying star. And red dwarfs are anywhere from seven and a half to half, uh, seven and a half percent to half the mass of our sun. So they're quite tiny. They're starting to shrink in and then they can become black holes. But they do have planets. These guys have, don't have time on their side, maybe a billion or two years, but they do have two huge planets. One of them is 4.2 times the mass of Earth, and the other is 7.6, which is amazing considering how small the sun is. They usually th used to think that most of the planets orbiting them were you know, like the size of the moon or maybe Mercury, but these guys are enormous. And they orbit very close to the red dwarf, which means there may be enough heat for life because these guys are awfully, awfully big. The red dwarf is known as Gliese 887. It's 10 and a half light years from Earth. I'll get that. I, I don't think we're going to find this in our time. Oh, I was going to say I was going to get Remax on the phone, but I guess I'll wait. <laughs> But we did get a, a special close-up picture of one of them, ah. and it looks a lot like New Jersey. Very good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a little, uh, a little downhearted, but it is a sign of life, isn't it? It is. Absolutely. Life in 1946. <laughs> yeah. But life of some kind, and this is the International S uh, Space Station. Magnificent picture. I believe it's from NASA of the space station transiting. That's the word they use. I hate that word the way I hate impact as a verb. But anyway, it is transiting the sun. Isn't that magnificent? That's beautiful. There you are. Thank you very much. And John Williams go. fades into the background. Yeah, am I really gonna, I'm gonna have to pay him money, aren't I? You're gonna have to pay him loads of money. But and I've been for, on now for 17 minutes. 17 minutes. And, uh, yeah, so and John, you're going to show me Dick Van Dyke. The lawyers are, are, are calculating or pulling out their calculators as we speak. I will get to my rant quickly here, and then we can talk about uh, Dick Van Dyke. Okay. Uh, delivery rant is what I'm going to get into today. Uh, this, there's some good news before we begin, because Canada Post reports that it's catching up on things. Uh, they say another week, and they should be back more or less into their kind of not quite regular zone, but busy, busy zone. So if you're expecting something, yeah, I found delivery a little better. I don't know if it's bad out your yeah, way, it's, but I had I'm a couple doing of things okay that with three days. Post. Yeah, it's it's okay. it's getting better. And again, the reason I'm mentioning this is kudos to Canada Post for having said something and trying to keep people apprised of what's going on. Unfortunately, I was zagging on UPS there for a while, as you will call. And again, I'm not ragging on the drivers or the people on the ground or the plant workers or the support people. It's the people at the top that are starting to get on my nerves because they are not informing people of what's going on. And the clients are getting rather irate now because they don't know. I did some research this morning because I have a shipment coming in. Uh, it was supposed to be here overnight. Now, granted, I knew there would be a delay. UPS indicated there would be a delay. The shipper indicated there would be a delay. But by this time next week, something that should have arrived under normal circumstances overnight will be a month, one month late. A and month? A month. Oh. And I got to UPS so stuff this is morning. being thrown in and get, getting mixed up, and something that may yeah, come this, in later is getting there earlier, right? Yeah, it, some things to yeah, fall through the cracks. And again, it's not the fault of the people in the plant. They're moving, and it's a, this is an impressive operation, UPS is. But I, I exchanged messages with somebody at UPS Canada in Mississauga this morning, and they admitted, and they told me, they informed me that the Montreal operation is the worst hit in the country. The Montreal region is the most clogged, of the UPS operation, and they wouldn't explain why. Where's, I asked. The, where's their warehouse? Laval? Here? They're in Lachine. They're at 13, Lachine? where the 13 meets the 20 is their big uh, Montreal operation, but they have other other small regional centers, but there's something is clogged there. I asked them, and I'm not being flipped now, I asked them if it was connected to COVID-19. They said no. Everybody's safe and sound, but uh, it's, we're having hear. a tough, tough slog. Mm -hmm. So... 
uh, and I took them to task for not informing people. And uh, they said, well, yeah, do you think we should? I said, yeah, well, at least pe tell people that they, they can expect delays and give them an idea as to what, what is going on. They might not be very pleased with the fact that their, their, their Chinese-made patio set is still stuck somewhere, but at least they'll know why. Uh, but they did, that didn't seem to register with the person. Of course, the guy at, at UPS Canada can't do very much. He doesn't control things. But well, it's interesting you mentioned that there's the guys at the top at UPS, and then you mentioned uh, Canada Post, but the people, according to what you said the last time, who are giving out the in information are the union. Is the union, not, yeah. Not, and here's, not, not the business leader. No, and here's an example. Again, we're talking about UPS. It's an American company based in the U.S., and, and that's all well and good. Now, they have something posted on their, on their, on their Facebook page, and they talk about, and of course they're, they're and I, the risk of sounding flip here too, they, they bounced and jumped on the bandwagon here, of the equality bandwagon in the wake of all the, of the things we've seen in recent weeks. And this appears to be something they just ripped out of a PowerPoint. It says, UPS calls for justice and reform to advance equality. That's all very good. Urges, this one disturbed me, I don't know why, urges immediate passage of federal anti-lynching act. What the hell is that? Uh, $3.2 million for programming to support the uh, National Urban League, the NAACP, and the United Negro College Fund, speaking of names that need to be changed. A million dollars to the National Museum of African American History and Culture, which is terrific and all that. And then one million UPS employee volunteer hours of service to black communities. That's all terrific. All of this is great. And then you, if you wish to find more information about this, you click on this, on this link and you are sent to an error page at UPS. And so this they was, shot this out the front door with a shotgun. Yeah, this was posted 18 days ago. Okay, so it's still stuck here in the middle and it doesn't really say very much. And it's under the name of Carol Tomei, whom is a, a, woman, a woman we were talking about her a couple of weeks ago, brand new uh, CEO at UPS, she used to be at Home Depot, I think. And I was terribly pleased to see a woman uh, at the top of this organization. And apparently she's very bright, but uh, not judging by this. This is not very impressive at all. Also, if you want to get information about UPS Canada, you type ups.ca. They were there for 10 years. They get an error message here too. Page not found. So we've got some serious problems going on here at UPS. This is one of the biggest delivery companies in the world. They employ half a million people, all right? Now, uh, granted, they have, they're going to concentrate on their home market, but we, you don't know what's going on. And I Canada's wrote a, big enough, isn't it? Yeah, I wrote a, I wrote a little piece 10%. for the blog. Pierre Damour and I worked together in communications, and I wrote a piece for the blog entitled, UPS at the Crossroads, What Can Brown Do for Itself? And I go on to just lay out what I just told you here. It's time to, to be transparent because in this day and age, in 2020, a quote unquote, transparency sells. So you got to really, in my opinion, let your client know what's going on. They may not like the message, but if they get the message and they can relate to it, then they stand, then you stand a better chance of keeping them as a client. So end of yeah. rant. And they're, they're angrier than ever now because they yeah. don't know anything. Yeah. Now, uh, this blog, you and Pierre, did is there a website address for that yep. that we it can is find? Two, it, it is two calm guys dot com. <laughs> I like that. Can you put it up? The link? It, it's right here. I'll put it right up here. This is our website, and you'll see Pierre and I, because we work together in Excellent. communications. And it's called twocomguys.com. I'm not necessarily plugging our business here, but this is part of the, well, of the no, things. Yeah. And he wrote, he writes some blog entries here too about communication. So anyway, I, I transpose that into what I do for a living here with, uh, with Pierre. And uh, right. so that's end of rant, end of rant. Okay. Let's go into something that I was looking into simply because Prime, oh my goodness. which is Amazon's uh, streaming system, uh, put up the first season of Dick Van Dyke. I was watching that this week. And my goodness, my, my spouse came up to me because she heard you and I talking about it a couple of days ago. And she said, my God, this was a religion in my household. Uh, everybody had to be, oh, yeah. keep quiet and uh, dinner had to be done in time to watch Dick Van Dyke. And I still watch some of these episodes and I remember seeing them when I was a kid. Now... Yeah, because they started in 1961. 1961, and uh, it was supposed to be. I'll, I'll throw out some trivia here. I'll, I'll put up the links to the to the trivia page that IMDb published. the 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 series was supposed to be entitled "Head of the Family," and it was supposed to star Carl Reiner initially, uh, but the the network found it to be a little too urban, a little too Jewish, quote unquote, and they went in a different direction, and they cast. Of course, Mary Tyler Moore, whom you see here, and they cast, of course, Dick Van Dyke. 
uh, who was 36 years old at the time. He was working on Broadway in Bye Bye Birdie. And yeah. uh, apparently Great he did, apparently did not like the idea of Mary Tyler Moore, who was 24 years old at the time, being cast. He thought she was too young. But apparently they got along like a house on fire on, on set, and uh, it, it, things clicked very, very quickly. So, um, And uh, they auditioned several people for the role of Rob Petrie, and this man apparently came in second or third in the auditions. Oh, my God, you're kidding me. Johnny Carson, apparently, yeah. according to some sources, was second in line. Uh, had Dick Van Dyke not taken the part, apparently, Carson stood a very good chance of getting the part of Rob Petrie. So the next year he got uh, The Tonight Show. Yeah. 62. So, yeah. So that's the wow. way things I didn't, went. No, I did, I did not, I know, did not that. know that either. Yeah, I was quite, quite interested. Boy, they really combed their hair, didn't they? They did in those days, yes. Yeah. So, of course, you had uh, Maury Amsterdam. Um, what's his name? Richard... Uh, Richard Deacon. Deacon. Uh, Rose Marie. Rose Marie. Mary Tyler Moore. And Richard Deacon and Maury Amsterdam were friends offset very good friends and they'd go out for drinks after a shoot and the insults that Amsterdam would hurl at Deacon who was in the in the sh in the show the brother-in-law of uh, of Alan Brady they would work out the insults off set and then they'd come back and uh, so Deacon knew exactly what was coming his way when Mel uh, Cooley Mel Cooley yeah so and there yeah. was a time after a while where where Mel would just come in and go yuck yeah, <laughs> that, that happened after. And that was I was going to ask out. you about this because I have a I have a chronological question. Okay, this again, of course, the Ottoman stumble. Uh, they shot several versions of this, of course. On some openings, you see him sort of sidestep the Ottoman. Occasionally, he'll he'll you'll see him do the tumble. Apparently, the producers dropped these in at the beginning of the show randomly, and as it turns out, people would start taking bets to see which version of the opening would be on their weekly version ah, of the show. Okay. So this became a big deal. I was going to ask you whether they did, they did the tumble for the first year and then the around it for the next. And I don't know the exact didn't. chronology, ah. but it was sort of interspersed there at random. So people never knew uh, which week or which show would have the tumble or the sidestep. So he was a great physical actor. He was a terrific he was physical wonderful. actor. He was a true clown and, and so he, was she. And they were both great dancers. And he inspired a lot of people too. So anyway, I've been watching this. I got a couple of stills here from- Oh boy, capris. Capri pants. Now she was wearing capri pants. The network did not approve of that. They found that uh, they found them a little too uh, lascivious, a little too uh, risque. And uh, at, at, one point, at one point they shot, they would shoot a scene where she would come out in pants and then come back out again in a skirt and then come back out in, in, in pants. So they did that just to piss off the people at the network. Eventually they relented so that the pants stayed and the, the sales of Capri pants went up in the US apparently at the time. Now, this is a still that I snagged from the very first episode in the first season. And this is Larry Matthews. He was my age in 1961 when this aired. I was six years old as well. Now he comes flying out from behind this divider, and if you can see his arm here, he is slapping Mary Tyler Moore on the the butt cheek as he rounds around her to head Did towards the kitchen. Did they keep that in? I never. Oh noticed yes, that, that is in the show. I watched it repeatedly. I can't really reproduce it here without uh, there being some problems with the video. But you can see his hand here. She barely flinches. She barely smiles. So I pr I, I only presume it was rehearsed. Now he comes flying down. After that, she keeps talking. Now, if you, if you look at the, now th how clear this is, if you look at the bottom of this island, you see the wedge here that they put in to keep the uh, island? right, to keep it straight. To keep it yeah. straight. Stable. And if you, if you watch it further, you'll see that this is all built in rather cheap quarter-inch plywood. And the, the floor looks like it's just painted concrete. This does not look like a floor you'd see in a house in New Rochelle, New York. You can see a little bit it of shows gaffer. You what goes behind the scene, yeah. you know, the cheap A little stuff. bit of gaffer tape here under the rug, too. Of course, none of this would have been visible on a cathode ray tube on a Marconi TV set at the time. So 
Uh, it would have looked quite clean. And of course, they had, I guess, shades of, uh, of gray because the show was only shot in black and white. They were going to go color after their fifth season, the fifth and final season, but uh, the show ended before they could shoot in color. So yeah, well, I think didn't Van Dyke say he'd had enough, or they a lot of them said they, there are like there me. are conflicting reports about that. Rosemary apparently didn't get along with Mary Tyler Moore, and uh, oh, really? uh, Carl Reiner suggests that he's the one he was who pulled out, and the Dick Van Dyke's is something else. So I mean, we could go on about this, but uh, I found it rather fascinating to. Uh, to watch There's some great show. character actors yeah. uh, visit that show too. And look at that 1960s uh, kitchen. I'm sure that phone of hers is, is a green dial phone, yep. you know, that dark yep. green. Uh, but the island would have been a little ahead of its time. The, it the, was, uh, it was, the, yeah. So, but you can see that it was put together again on, if you're looking at a monitor in a control room, you're not going to be seeing that concrete floor or anything else. So it was, yeah. it was quite something. And Maury Amsterdam, uh, said to be the first quote-unquote Jewish uh, character in a sitcom in the U.S. at the time, so 1961. Yeah, to, yeah they were all pretty much wasp people. Yep. Right yep. Yeah, yeah. So. And he, uh, he, they, they. One of the fun things they did is they had parties, and uh, and Amsterdam was sort of this old vaudevillian too. But he played the viola, and Rosemary was a comedian in her own right. Yes, so she did vaudeville these wonderful too. Wonderful parties yep. to yep. to entertain uh, uh, the boss. Uh, Carl Reiner, of course. Well, that's that's uh, the in the plot of Alan that Brady. very that very first episode is the whole thing about uh, uh, Laura and Rob being invited to a party at uh, Brady's house, and then Larry Matthews gets sick and she won't leave, and this and that and the other thing. So, uh, mm. yeah, they was and the uh, next door neighbors were Jerry Paris and what was her name? Well, her name in it was Millie Helper, and yep. they lived in New Rochelle. Yeah, Paris died quite young. Uh, the woman who played Millie Helper died not that long ago, actually. She and was she very was, funny. She was with Child during, I think, uh, one season, and they went out of their way to, of course, cover that up. And she didn't panic well. The uh, and of course they slept in separate bread, separate beds. They did, Rob and uh, Laura. They wouldn't let them uh, get together. They absolutely, categorically refused to have them sleep in the same bed. So, man. I wonder, where, I wonder their, where their child came from, yeah, Immaculate right. Conception. There yeah. is one that's ahead of its time, too, where Rob uh, thinks he has, uh, they've taken home the, the wrong, they brought home the wrong baby from the hospital. This is later on, and he upsets, starts upsetting uh, Mary, uh, Laura, and he, he starts trying to do uh, footprints on the kid to check if the foot, you know, Mary, Laura comes in and the baby's got a blue foot. Yeah. But there is a look when he calls the Peters family, which is next to Petri in the hospital. And Rob opens the door, looks out, and then looks at Laura and a black couple walk in. And the guy is the guy in Mission Impossible. The uh, the oh, bomb making geek there and I can't right. think of his name. His he name just, just went out of my brain. He was great. He and his Greg, wife laughed. Was it for Greg me. Morris? Greg Morris. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a couple of years later. I've one forgotten of those about flashback that one. ones, and Rob just gets silly, and boy was it funny. Because it was shot in, the... shot in front of a live audience, except for two or three episodes where they had flashbacks and things like that, and then they they apparently they sweetened the the laughter with a laugh track as well too, because it it sounds it sounds pretty canned on the air, but apparently it was a live audience. So and an and ongoing thing too is nobody could uh, pronounce uh, uh, his name properly. He always had to, uh, did a sort of, no, no, it's not Petri, it's Petri. Yeah, Petri, that's Petri. right. So. I love that show. Great memories. Great well memories. before it's, well, but well ahead of its time. Yeah. Okay, uh, Great Friday. Stuff. It should, uh, it, I hope it'll be a nice quiet, it'll be cool and perhaps wet, but enjoy your weekend. And, yeah, uh, we've, we've almost got all of the annuals and we're still planning. It's, it's taking a Oh, I mowed the lawn today. I didn't get pictures because we were, it was, it was raining a little bit, so I had to get out there and. Uh, Did it rain? Oh, it did a bit. It's it supposed a to bit, the yeah. shaft. Yeah. Yeah. So. Joey Elias is with us on Monday. Uh, yes. A comic you and I have known for a long time. He does he does stuff for Global TV. He's done many other projects, too, so I look forward to speaking Big hockey Joey. fan. He yeah. does the Gazette's uh, blog, video blog for, for hockey. He's a real Montreal boy. A good, a good mensch. Okay. Yeah. Off okay, you go. Well, have a great weekend, and you I'm going to play with my tripod. Oh, okay, if then. John Williams is still let's on. Just no. leave, let's just leave it at that.